importance of pharmacovigilance in Yunani system of medicine. Before that, I extend my greetings to all the people who are behind this webinar. My thanks to the person who introduced me. As a faculty, as a teacher of this National Institute of Yunani Medicine, apart from that, I have been designated as the coordinator for this pharmacovigilance activities, particularly for the Yunani drugs with the Ministry of Irish Government of India. Keeping aside all these things, let me focus on the topic, the discussion it is, uh, for which I have been invited, the importance of pharmacovigilance in the Yunani system of medicine. The next half an hour to 60 minutes, we are going to cover, this is the outlook of the presentation at the talk where we will be understanding about the induction and the concept of drug safety, that induction stands for some of the factors which stimulates you to understand what is the drug safety and how we make us to go for drug safety related issue. Further, we will be focusing about the understanding pharmacovigilance, sphere of pharmacovigilance, it means what exactly pharmacovigilance, what are the things which, which, which are the par and part, I mean the includery consideration, the points under which the pharmacovigilance is going to deal, that sphere where up to what extent the pharmacovigilance is going to part. There are specific terms associated with this pharmacovigilance that we are going to understand. And uh, the major part of my discussion lies about the topic of my discussion where I'm just going to put some emphasis on the fundamentals of the Yunani medicine so as to understand well about the concept of pharmacovigilance. And finally, the importance of the pharmacovigilance, what makes us to understand pharmacovigilance with reference to the people of Yunani medical sciences. And then the conclusion, which is going to give the gist of the total presentation. That the first part of my presentation is the induction on the concept of drug safety. If you look at that, throughout the history, since the ancient times, the knowledge of medicine and it causes harm was well, well known by the people who are practicing or taking care of the health. There are certain instances of warning and consequences regarded in the history documented about the harm induced by the people and accidentally happened the harm of all these things are there documented and at the same time the uh, contemporary practitioners warn about the consequences if they are going to do intentionally. Uh, we have a great authority to whom we call as the father of medicine for the conventional as well as the Yunani system of medicine, Hippocrates, and some of the other physicians of his era and before him, they, are used, they observed the impact of medicine on humans. Here, how the medicines are working in the human subjects, whether they are truly exerting the intended effect or beyond something which is not intended. We have many people particularly focusing on the statement of Hippocrates who warned the use of medicine during the early pregnancy. In fact, the today's modern pharmacovigilance came into existence with a very premier kind of abnormalities detected during the pregnancy where the people have been subjected to some of the drug which is not indicated to use in pregnancy. So if we have the concept of not to use medicine in the early pregnancy was given by Hippocrates, to whom we called as Hippocrat, somewhere in the third and the fourth century BC, followed by the, the contemporary physicians, practitioners of those days, they also told about, they referred the effect of medicinal plants on both. They said that The contemporary physicians of those days, they also mentioned about the effect of medicine plants on both beneficial and harmful. It means they had an insight about that herbs are, they, some of the herbs are beneficial, some may cause harmful effect to the human beings. And we have a historical book called as the textbook of medicine, somewhere it was written between 800 to 200 BC uh, in the mid of the LO, that's dynasty, where clear indication of the book, uh, drugs are there. There are herbs which are toxic and non-toxic one. And accordingly, they suggested to use proper use of this medication whenever it is required. This is the gist about the concept of the drug safety was there since an ancient time, since antiquity. But 
The documentary evidences are available only when the man started writing the incidents accordingly. I have some of the pictures through which I just to try to convince you. Most of you people might have heard about that in the recent past, maybe a couple of years back, uh, there was a hospital dedicated for the child health care in Telangana State, Hyderabad, by name Nilopar, where some infants are admitted for the treatment, some vaccination, and where the children, the infants were suffering with the fever, where the physician recommended, suggested that these infants to be given a, a, a drug medicine, which is meant to for pyraxia, the control of fever, but by unknowingly or knowingly, there was a medication or error happened with the nursing people. Instead of giving paracetamol, they have given, they were provided tramadol, one of the chemical substance to the children, the infants, they are less than a very few weeks of age. As a result, around 32 infants were reported to be died due to just because of the medication error. There is a huge hue and cry from the world, particularly the New Zealand, where the narcotics have been strictly abandoned to be not used publicly. Unfortunately, the drugs like Kamini Vidarva and Barshasha from our sisterly system of medicine, Ayurveda and Yunani, are being used without prescription as a substitute for opioid substances. This indicates that these are something like a misuse of the drugs that are being not indicated for uh, like an opioid dependence. But at the same time, we have another example of a very common use of cough preparations like uh, Corex, Pencidil, and Wix. And these are all the very over-the-counter products available at most of the chemists, pharmacies. But what we have learned, basically the drugs are for cough and upper respiratory tract infection. But due to the non-availability of the anti-prohibitionary acts on the alcohol consumption, people started using these drugs as a substitute for the alcohol who are dependent on alcohol. So this is also an indicate a misuse of drugs which are not been indicated for the purpose indication. I would like to take you to the history of this medical sciences where a 14 years girl, she was suffered from that ingrow of the nail the nail, which is likely to be grown normally, uh, instead of that, unfortunately, this 14 year girl were reported to have there's the growth of a uh, nail towards the body that is called as ingrow of the nail. That was a very painful condition, leads to frequent ulceration and infection. That during these days, this was happened somewhere in the late 19th century, the people started trying to remove the nail with the help of local anesthetics. And one of the part of this girl was removed successfully. Due to certain limitations, she was asked to go for the second other affected limb. At that time, instead of using the approved local anesthetic, they assume that chloroform is going to do a very miracle in inducing anesthetic effect. As a result, this henna greener was ingested, uh, inhaled alcohol, chloroform, as a result, she met with under respiratory failure, suffocation, edema of the pulmonary system. Ultimately, she met with a death that was an eventuality. There's a drug reaction. In the history of medical science, we have one of the developmental milestones in the field of the uh, adverse effects of the drug. During early 1930, uh, this is the first antibiotic available in the world. It is prepared with the sulfonylamide. Though the drug was available in the form of a powder that is meant for the adult use, and at the same time it was observed that the pediatric dosage was not there. So one pharmaceutical industry intended to provide its elixir, a syrup for the pediatric dosage form, where this sulfonylamide was tried to mix in a liquid and a chemical substance to make a solvent. The chemist tried to use different solvents where he unable to get it dissolved the sulfonamide. But luckily, one of the chemical substance, diethyl glycol, was successfully made in the solvent of the sulfonylamide, and the syrup form is provided for the children as an antibiotic dosage. But unfortunate thing is, this sulfonylamide was proved to be a boon for the people with infection, but at the same time, it becomes a 
bad impact on the chipidatic doses because the chemical which used for making a solvent is a highly toxic nephrotoxic substance that is generally used as an anti freezing one without looking into the effectiveness of the drug they are just without looking into the safety of the drug the pharmacy and the manufacturer just focus on the efficacy ignoring the safety aspect of the sulfonylamide that leads to death of more than 100 children at the point of time immediately health authorities noted all over the europe and the america that the drug was withdrawn finally the today what we are going to talk about the concept of the pharmacovigilance the modern pharmacovigilance just emerged of the tragedy which has happened with the thalidomide basically thalidomide was a drug of choice for neurological problem on certain neurological diseases during the second world war there were the people who are suffering with the post traumatic stress syndrome and most of them are looking for a good good hypnotics sleep inducing drug to get sleep people started using thalidomide as a over the counter drug but the same time it is been observed that people who are consumed in the early stage of pregnancy they do use this thalidomide for inducing sleep but at the same time they got another effect uh, that is called as the morning sickness has been diminished and it means among the pregnant women this thalidomide was proved to be an anti nausea and anti vomiting drug among the pregnancy that is hyperemesis gravidoria though the effect was good but without looking into the consequences of the drug most of the people women from the german and other part of the country around 10000 uh, pregnant people gave birth of a child were born with them. some anomalies in the limb that is called as the phocomelia and this phocomelia associated with thalidomide disaster disaster happened in 1960 is the reason for the today's discussion about the pharmacovigilance and otherwise i can say the modern uh, pharmacovigilance first came into existence with this thalidomide disaster based upon all these things what we came to know about that the usage of the drugs has is to be ensured with the safety of the patient and the, and the safety should be more prioritized over the efficacy because a purpose the intention of the practitioner and the physician is to provide more effective effective drug with the minimal harm so that is the reason of that we are now we are talking about the pharmacovigilance if you look at the philosophical understanding of the people and more uh, very practical also often we come across some of the statement from the scientists philosophers practitioner most of the people in locally say that no effective medicine is without risk including herbs mean any medicine whatever the purpose a person is using it cannot ignore that it may not be imbibed with any risk at the same time some people say that poison is in everything and nothing is without poison only the dosage the quantity the amount makes either a poison or a remedy so here if you take appropriate adequate quantity of the drug it may work according to the intention if you exceed the dosage beyond the threshold of the individual it may prove to be a poisonous uh, it is with reference to the unani text with uh, several authorities have mentioned about that abu al hawi titti ke jo musannif abu bakar zakaria razi ne likha hua hai yahan tak bakasrat pani peena bhi sarab hai क्योंकि ये बदन के अंदर तबीज और तरती पैदा करता है एंड नाउ वी हैव केसेस ऑफ वाटर इंटॉक्सिकेशन आल्सो बट द सेम टाइम बिकॉज़ ए ग्रेटर अमाउंट ऑफ द कम्युनिटी इज सब्जेक्टेड टू बी हैबिटुएटेड विद द यूज ऑफ अल्कोहल शराब का कसरत का इस्तेमाल फिक्र इंटेलेक्ट को फासिद कर देता है बलीद को कम और मुकद्दत कर देता है दिस इज अकॉर्डिंग द जॉलिनोस हैज टू ऑल अबाउट द गैलेंस स्टेटमेंट एंड द Hippocrates also stated that dawa usi waqt piyo jab zarurat ho bila zarurat pi loge aur asar karne ke liye usse koi marz na milega to zahir baat hai to sehat par asar andaaz hogi marz paida ho jayega unless and otherwise there is a disease you don't go for taking medication without any element if any person unintentionally they started using drugs drugs may 
try to effect on the natural function of the body. There is another statement, to undergo treatment, you have to be very healthy. So this is something very, uh, it looks very stupidity. Treatment obviously will be given to the people who are suffering, but this, uh, this French philosopher Molary has told us it's a very critical point because apart from your sickness, you have to withstand the medicine because we don't know. Most of the drugs, they have inherent capacity to kill you, but at the same time, it provides very healthy effects on your body. So to undergo treatment, you have to be very healthy because to make your body, the drug should be fight against sickness along with, uh, with stat. And we have the Ninani very wonderful description about that. Our Atibba have told about that. Taza machili or dud ko ek saath na khaya jaya. Kyunke science se ye baat sabit ho chiki hai kis tarah ke juzam uste maal se juzam palit jaysa muzmin amraat pada kerta hai. And probably our the elders, you know, most of our families, our grandparents, they used to stop taking that. They want to permit us to consume the sort of specific diet like the curd, fish, uh, chicken and all those things. There is, they won't allow. They had a very good insight understanding. I know from the Yunani science, it's clear that one cannot be used, particularly this fish and food and the milk products. And like we have another different kind of pet drugs, drug interaction and are there. Like harissa is a kind of a diet, ke baad, particularly anar nahi khana chahiye. We have the rationality, why they have told about this. Similarly, we have a beautiful description from the literature. Dood ko turushi ke saath nahi dama karna chahiye. And now the modern science is also clear that it is going to cause a crawling of the milk. Sari khane ke baad angur nahi khana chahiye. Today, most of the drug interactions or reaction has been subjected to uh, CYP P140. That is one of the substances which is usually drive, uh, present in the liver is being affected when people started using Grapes are angur or dawn ke saath mein nahi jaise. Tarbuz or chawal saath mein nahi khana chahiye. This is a very wonderful point. Why it is? I will be explaining you at the end of the presentation. And here I have a text where, as a Yunani practitioner, as a Yunani student, and the scientists, the people of Yunani science, most of all of us will know about Buali Sina, Ibn Sina, who is an authority. Uh, the unfortunate thing happened with Buali Sina, though he is a very wonderful intellectual physician, astronomer, physicist, and the alchemy, many more uh, credentials he'll be having. But the worst condition of him is uh, he used to have an alcohol and some other uh, habits were there. But he suffered with an intestinal colic. In Hone Apane, Shagirdon se Kahakis Kilach Kili, he took Hokana, enema, without looking into the pros and the cons for multiple times in a single day. There, he asked his students to prepare the curves uh, as a carminative so that the, the, the what is it, the flatus should be removed from the bowels. Uh, and the quantity prescribed to use the curves was around 17.5 grams. Instead of that, unknowingly or knowingly, the devotees are the followers of Goli Sina. They give it more than one gram of this the curves in the hukna along with a few, as a result, Bool is an amid with an athlete. It is there in the literature clearly indicated that Ibnisena met with unfortunate death just because of the war dosage of the drug. So all these things are explaining about the drug-related issues where overdose is causing something wrong. Some of the foods and drugs are going to be interacted that as a result it may cause harm to the body. Some foods should not be taken. All these are as a Exemplary, we have come across. Let me take you to the true part of my understanding that explanation, the pharmacovigilance. Uh, here, I thought to be, let us go for understanding what exactly pharmacovigilance. Basically, this pharmacovigilance is a combination of two different words. Pharmacon, which is derived from the Greek word, which stands for the drug or medicine. Vigilance is a Latin term, which stands for monitoring, surveillance, careful watch. It means the pharmacovigilance is a combination of vigilance surveillance on the drug and drug medicine related activity. WHO came out of the wonderful definition. According to the WHO, pharmacovigilance is defined as is science and the activities relating to the detection, assessment, 
understanding and prevention of adverse effect or any other possible drug related problem here primarily we are focusing about the adverse effect something which is not intended apart from that the who definition is also inculcate other possible drug related problem we don't know what exactly this there are a huge number of terms we come across with reference to the pharmacovigilance so in total who explains about that this is a science and activity relating to the detection assessment and understanding and prevention of adverse related with the drug and now this pharmacovigilance not only is playing with the drug related adversaries and activities it also includes otherwise i can say this is the sphere the dimension of the pharmacovigilance it also cover herbals and we people belongs to the uh, alternative system of medicine in india majority of the drugs we use as a source from the herbs only any person who is dealing with the treatment of any element with the herbs so all herbs comes under the domain of the pharmacovigilance and some of the medical sciences considered as a traditional medicine or complement in alternative medicine all the scientific the philosophical points of their traditional complement is also governed by the pharmacovigilance and here according to the who definition ayush system of medicine comes under the traditional and complementary alternative medicine in india and beside these two blood products like nowadays this so many things are being used as a treatment purpose for the blood products we there is a, another branch came out of the pharmacovigilance is the hemovigilance biologicals means the biological products from the humans or the animals is being used for treatment medical devices anything starting from the syringe needle or sprayer or something like a bodily invasive substances comes under the medical devices any adversaries or any activity related to medical devices is also being gone by the pharmacovigilance vaccine any kind of a vaccine either it could be for the polio or the recent past the covid all these things also comes under the vaccine and is being gone by the pharmacovigilance standard medicine which are marketed by the regulatory authorities medication error i said one of the nilo for incident nilo for hospital chitna hospital of hyderabad that one of the example like we have n number of medication error cases are there but are also been gone by the pharmacovigilance some of the drugs don't have the efficacy report but being used like thalidomide basically thalidomide is a drug of choice for a neurological problem but without looking into the indication people started using for Uh, what is called as the sleep induction what is called as the uh, as a hypnotic and for uh, vomiting or the nausea associated pregnancy use of drug without indication and in adequate scientific basis if any person promoting any drug or claiming something these drugs are going to do miracle or something assured treatment without proper indication is also being gone by the pharmacovigilance i have explained about the abuse and misuse of like uh, uh, barshasha and kamini and uh, this uh, conventional cough syrup they are comes under the category of abuse misuse of the medicines and uh, the major portion of food and drug interaction we have come across from the nani part drug interaction there are certain drug if you take in combination may cause uh, bodily reaction there are certain food foods may cause body reaction and apart beyond this uh, now the pharmacovigilance is also focusing about the material vigilance where what kind of materials are being used for preparing the drugs preservation of the drugs transportation of the drugs and how it is being dispersed to the people and that this end point misleading advertisement as a coordinator for this program government of india is focusing more about pharmacovigilance activities this misleading advertisement is one of the biggest challenge for the indian community and the medical fraternity uh, except india no other part of the globe is the, is undertaken the misleading advertisement so pharmacovigilance is not only going to talk about the drug related adverse effects and it is a related problem but it also includes all these things here have got a record of this thing here some terminologies which generally we talk about if a person consume any drug if adverse effect happen or anything will happen what probably could be happen some specific terms we are going to cover so generally whenever we have a patient take some medicine if it causes anything which is not expected we uh, say this is a layman language even the professionals also speak a non specific term called as the side effect basically side effect is different from adverse effect let us try to understand what exactly side effect side effect is a non specific term used to describe unwanted effect of a drug this means 
We are expecting that if I take one medicine for pain, pain relieving, the drug should cause only relief in the pain. But if apart from that, if it causes any other problem, any other effect, that effect could be a positive or negative, that is being considered as a side effect. But do remember that this side effect should be happening when the person is taking the dosage which is prescribed normally. Uh, it should be in a specific category. And moreover, most of the drugs are the side effects are exerted as a pharmacological activity of the particular drug. This is not something unrelated. The most common term which we use in pharmacovigilance is adverse event. Here, this stands for any untoward, unexpected, undesirable, that what we are not expecting medical experience, that may present during treatment, may happen, occur during the treatment with a pharmaceutical product. It means it could be a drug or device, anything, but it should, does not necessarily have a causal relationship. I mean, where we are suspecting that I took particular medicine, these are the things happen. And there may, there may not be any something like a cause, there is no cause and relationship should be there. Only suspicious condition will be there. In such condition, we call it as an adverse event. And the most important part of this pharmacovigilance is the adverse drug reaction. This is defined as a response to a drug. So one person has a taken drug, there is a response. And this response is painful, harmful, noxious. And this is unintended, never expected. And now it is happening at a normal dose. And that even among the human being might be taken, might have been taken this drug for a prophylaxis treatment that treating the condition for diagnostic purpose or sometimes for the treatment of a particular disease. Whatever it could be. Sometimes what happens is some drugs may be used for modifying physiological functions, like oral contraceptive pills are there as a prophylaxis only. But whatever the reason it could be, the drug has been taken in a normal dose, but it causes unintended and noxious effect. And has, if you look at this, there is a suspicious causal relationship. I can say that, yes, I have got the problem. The, uh, whatever the thing we report observed is just because of the usage of this drug. And this is between the medicinal product and the reaction is being causally related. Sometimes what happens is these adverse events and adverse reactions are very severe. We call this a serious condition. When we call this a serious, and this is an untoward medical occurrence that can happen at any dose. It could be a minimal, suboptimal, normal, or higher dose. As a result, what happened? The person may lead to death. If it is not death, at least the drug or something can cause requires inpatient hospitalization or sometimes prolongation of existing hospitalization. Or otherwise, if it is not the two, the third category is it leads to persistent or significant disability or incapacity to perform any normal day-to-day -day function. And otherwise, if it is not three, and this serious adverse effect cause a life-threatening condition to the patient. This is the very worst kind of thing that can be happened and reported with some of the drugs. All these are the three the few terms which generally govern in the pharmacovigilance. Let me take you to the fundamentals of Yunani medicine, as because we are focusing about the importance of pharmacovigilance in Yunani medicine. I like to throw some light on the fundamentals of Yunani medicine. Basically, this Unani system of medicine is an integral part of the Ayush medical system of medical sciences in India, where we stand for this Ayurveda, Yoga, Unani, Siddha, Soerika, and Homeopathy. It means this is a government uh, patronage under the Ministry of Ayush propagating system of medicine in all aspects. And now, if you look at this fundamental, we have a Umuritabaya. I don't want to go all the seven Umuritabaya. Basically, two points I would like to emphasize that is the Mizaj temperament or something constitution and akhlaq because these are the two things are going to play in determining the nature of the individual temperament of the individual and drugs diseases because all the creatures in the universe and all the substances in the universe have they they have been uh, subjected with a particular kind of a message that they have. and uh, all living beings they have four filth that they're based upon the predominance of the filth and akhlaq with humors, each and individual person has been uh, categorized based upon the humoral category also. And these two things are highly contains the elemental qualities. And these qualities are either it could be a single or compound, like it could be a hard, cold, and this is moist and dry, and something is a combination. And we've got, we've got, like many more things are in the fundamentals. When you come to the part of the Usulila treatment, 
we follow that unani people follow usul bezid that's called as the contradictory to the hair quality of the disease and the patient and moreover our treatment is more focusing on the holistic approach where we treat the individual with a different approach as a whole we treat there will be an individualized treatment because one treatment cannot be subjected to all the people because every individual will be having a different temperament and desire is there but at the same time we have a different treatment modalities like ilaj with dawa where drugs are being used and tadabir different regimens are there riza a group of a diets are there and uh, but the, and moreover we have manipulative techniques called as ed ilaj with dawa the surgical techniques these are the few points i intended to place before the august audience about the fundamentals of unani medicine let me take you to more based upon the fundamentals if you look at the concept of the pharmacological vigilance whether because unani system of medicine is having a very charismatic record of thousands of years uh, starting from hippocrates from from the 2 to 3 to 4 bc even before that and till today so almost it covers nearly some 2000 years of history successful history of treatment is that whether the unani system is having any concept of the pharmacovigilance it means drug safety related issue uh, i have an answer to this question among the eminent physicians of unani we have a very versatile very legendary kind of a person of those days uh, abu bakr mohammed bin zakaria razi who uh, came out of it a very intense encyclopedia and a 23 volumes al hawi fit tip in some of his books he make recommended testing of the new drugs on animal and human before general use he says that if you want to treat any person if it is a new combination of a drug or a new drug you are expecting that this particular drug can do or go bit good better to the person he suggested recommended better to start using among the animals first and use human before making use general as a whole so this uses uh, the what is the concept of pre clinical studies or experimental studies type followed by uh, another personality ibn sina uh, who is also very popular for the unani system of medicine because his work al hanun kitab is being taught up to 17th century in the western medical colleges institution and he came out of seven standards the principle for testing and using of drugs and what the seven pro- the principle stand the using uh, standards the principle of testing the drug i have another slide where i will be putting the information there is also been to be considered for research as well as general practice i said that you know the fundamental point we have paid more attention about the nizab the temperament of the people because all the living beings it not only the humans but any substance in the cosmos is been contemplated with some kind of nizab similarly the drugs also have a specific nizab uh, though we are considering nizab as a temperament it may not be the right meaning of the nizab but uh, it shows indirectly the temperament and is it audible yes you are hello yes sir yeah yes sorry for the inconvenience happened with this 
are the fundamentals. So we have got this concept of the pharmacovigilance where we come across about the Razi, Guelicina. And I said, in our system of medicine, we have a very specific concept like every drug is having mizaj and every drug is having certain degree strength based upon its quality that we call it as the darja. The drug, it could be a darja avval, durvam, suvam, charum, four degrees are there with reference to the quality. The quality, it could be a sar or harar. So by the same time, we believe that higher the degree of the drug, mean higher the darja hararat, higher the darja barudat in the drug, higher will be the muzirat effect. I mean, it causes very contraindication, causes no, uh, what is called this uh, noxious effect in the human beings if you use. And by the same time, Yunani practitioners also say to prevent or to nullify such a noxious effect with the use of the drug, they recommended to go for a mudabbir, mean detoxifying some of the toxic effect of the drug. But at the same time, if after or with the detoxification, they also proposed, propagated to use muscle correctives with the drugs. So to minimize the contra, uh, what is called the indications or unexpected effect of the drug. Based upon these three, four points, uh, we I can say that Yunani system of medicine was well understood with reference to the drug safety related issue. And as I, I was assured that Boli Senap uh, prescribed seven principles are there that is particularly for the trial to be used among the sub patient and the, these things can be adopted for the patient in the general practice also the first point he said that whatever that drug you are using it should must be a pure yeah the drug must be you must be pure if you are using any drug for treatment, and assume that and remember that it should be a pure, it should not be uh, adulterated or substitute or impure. And the drug must be tested only for one condition. Use one drug, one medicine for only for one particular condition. Don't go for multiple problems. And drug must be tested in a contradictory diseases. Like we believe that there is a usul bizid. If the disease of cold in nature and the drug should be selected of hot in mizaj. And strength of the drug must be proportional to the severity of the disease. Suppose if a person is suffering with the fever of a high grade and the low grade drugs are drugs which causes a low uh, intensity, hypothermic cannot be used. I mean, you have to use the proposed strength of the drug should be proportional to the severity of the disease. And the fifth principle according to Buell is Nasis, uh, the time at which medicines therapeutic effect, effect become apparent must be considered because Sometimes there are diseases which can naturally be resolved. If uh, if you are going to you introduce a drug, by the time the tabiat itself is going to neutralize the disease phenomenon, then it is very difficult to say whether the drug has worked or the tabiat has exerted the function. And that the sixth principle according to Bull Sina is the drug must be absorbed in a continued action and for a prolonged period of a time. It means if I use one medical one medicine, it should work continuously. And it has to, if I take it frequent doses, multiple frequency as per the prescribed dosage, it action should be prolonged. Then only it, it, then we consider it as the real effect. The seventh principle according to Google synthesis, in order to understand the strength, that is effect and the degree effectiveness of the drug, it must first be tested in human, then judgment to be made. They say, uh, taking the some of the ideas of the Razi, Bolisina says that use among some of the human beings as a specific case, then you use this and the general people. So based upon this seven principle, these all seven principles of Bolisina is also going to be talking about more safety of the drug related issue. Let me uh, go for this, what the conceptual understanding we have in Yunani already have shown these are the slide. No effective medicine is without risk. It's a common statement. And Jalinus ne likha hai ki jab whenever he used to suffer with insomnia, bekhwa bhi hoti hai to uski shikayat ko dur karne ke liye kahu ka khiliya istemal karta tha. He used to make a crystal of this kahu and now he know that kahu agar continuously istemal karega to ye iski muzirat bhi hai. So to prevent the muzirat of this kahu, he used to add darchini. So this Yunani literature is explaining about that to prevent the, what is called as the adversaries related to one particular drug, they use some other drug like the characters, we call it as a muslay. 
right one second thing is poison is in everything and nothing is without poison the dose it makes is the different and we know that i have explained about the incident that happened with the police in aware bukhne mein unhone tukme karab और फिर की मकदार को बढ़ा दिया जिसके नतीजे में वो मौत हासिल हो गई एंड एक्सेस यूज ऑफ अदर वाटर एंड शराब इज आल्सो बीन बता दिया था एंड हियर ताजा मछली और दूध को एक साथ ना खाया जाए क्योंकि जुजाम और फालिज जैसे मुस्लिम अमराज पैदा करती है अंडर द ब्रैकेट आई मेंशन बिकॉज़ इसलिए कि ये दोनों चीजें गलीज हैं यानी गजाइयत के اعتبار से दोनों गलीज हैं और इसमें फसाद की तरफ जल्द मुस्तहिल हो जाते हैं दे आर गोइंग टू अडॉप्ट एक्सेप्ट इंफेक्शन इनके अंदर बिगाड़ जल्दी लाख हो सकता है लिहाजा इन दोनों से वो मादे पैदा होंगे जो रद्दी होंगे बदन इंसान के लिए अफाल खास को सर अंजाम देने के लिए मादा जो खिल की शक्ल में होगा वो रद्दी नहीं बल्कि जयद होना चाहिए अच्छा होना चाहिए अगर ये रद्दी होगा और मजीद अगर ये मुजमिन हो जाएगा तो ऐसी चीजें मुजमिन अमराज के मुजिब होंगे एंड दे आर गोइंग टू क्रिएट ऑल क्रॉनिक डिसीज लाइक दिस इज लेप्रेसी एंड पैरालसिस ऑल्सो and sauda ki tarah mustahil ho jayega jisam paida karega aur badal ki tarah mustahil ho jayega this is how the rationality have been set up about that ye jis tarah maine bol sena ka waqia jo bataya tha khutne mein unhone jo dawa istemal ki thi jiske natije mein maut halak ho gayi thi yunani ki chand kitabon yunani ul tabbi tabqat ul tibba mein ye wazeh taur pe likha hua hai ke bol sena ki maut ka wajah sirf excessive dosage of the khukna along with uncontrolled or beyond the normal dosage of the drugs leads to डेथ दूध को तुलसी के साथ जमा नहीं करने की बात जब आ रही है तो कहते हैं क्योंकि तुलसी दूध को मेदे में जमा देती है इट इज गोइंग टू मेल्ट इन द स्टमक एंड जब ये दूध मेदे में रह जाएगा तो जाहिर बात है इसके अंदर अफूनत का फसाद लाग हो जाएगा तो जहर की शक्ल अख्तियार हो जाता है और अक्सर औकात ऐसी चीजें जब मेदे में मौजूद होती हैं तो ये कॉलिक का बायस बनती है Sometimes it can leads to acute abdominal pain and colic pain leads on. Okay, sari khane ke baad angur nahi khaya jaye. Kyunki mete ko tar karne wali rutubat zyada hoti hai. Sari ke andar rutubat zyada hoti hai. Angur ke andar angur ke andar sari mein balgamiyat aur lace paida karne wale alamat paaye jati hai. Agar balgamiyat ke zyada ke tabar se ye bhi sard hai aur angur se hasil hone wale tari agar ye dono mil jaye. तो ये बलगे में अंगूर की रुदबत की वजह से और बढ़ जाती है और बलगमी अमराज पैदा करती है लिहाजा अतिबा ने बड़ी ममानत की है कि चंद चीजों को चंद बाइक में न लिया जाए एक और मिसाल हमने जो बताया था हरी सा खाने के बाद अनार नहीं खाया जाए क्योंकि अनार खाबिज और नफाक होता है नफाक पैदा करता है हरीसा क्योंकि गलीज और लजज होता है इसलिए इसमें बलगम पैदा होंगे और नफाक जैसी चीजें शामिल हो जाएंगी और हजम में खलल आ जाता है और इसके बाद रद्दी मादे पैदा होकर मुख्तलि अमराज पैदा करेंगे लिहाजा इन दोनों चीजों को मुश्तर तौर पर नहीं इस्तेमाल करना चाहिए आइए तरबूज और चावल के साथ नहीं खाना चाहिए इससे ये बात पता चलता है क्योंकि चावल नफाक और कसीद रतूबत है क्योंकि इसके अंदर रतूबत ज्यादा पाई जाती है तरबूज के अंदर भी तो रतूबत बकसत होती है ये दोनों जब रतूबतें मिल जाती हैं तो ये जोफ मेदे के हामिल लोगों में ज्यादा नुकसान पहुंचाती है तो मखसूस तौर पर उन लोगों के लिए नहीं दिया जाना चाहिए जिनके मेदे कमजोर हों और जिनकी कुत इश्तहा बिल्कुल कमजोर हों यहाँ तक हमने बहुत सारी बातों को समझने की कोशिश की मैं चंद चीजों को आगा करवाना चाहता हूँ क्योंकि दौरे हाजिर में इन द मॉडर्न फार्मोकोविजिलेंसिस्टमेडिसिन बिकॉज क्लासिकली वी हैव ए वेल डिस्क्राइब्ड डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द फार्मोकोविजिलेंस अंडर द कैप्टन ऑफ मुजरत और मुसले एंड हाउ टू कंट्रोल ऑल दोज थिंग्स but nowadays uh, as we have been associated with this project and the government is paying much attention about the pharmacovigilance so i thought it is my responsibility to share the contribution of the one of the eminent physician professor sayed zillur rahman saab to whom we called as the modern pharmacovigilance the father the one of the pioneer of pharmacovigilance in unani system of medicine wo kaise let us see uh, here because in 2004 who published guidelines on ayur system of medicine where these guidelines guidelines are called as who safety monitoring of herbal medicine in pharmacovigilance uh, after the publication of these guidelines people of different sciences like uh, ayurveda and siddha and uh, yunani and they started working on the modules how to incorporate these guidelines to make our science more effective and free from side effects and the said zilurman is the one who established the center for safety and rational use of indian system of medicine that is called the csr uism uh, under the aegis of ibn sina academy of medieval sciences uh, medieval medicine and sciences aligarh and the activities what he has expanded is in 2006 immediately after the establishment of one year he organized one national symposium on relevance of herbal pharmacovigilance 
First, he tried to understand whether it is relevant to the herbal pharmacovigilance. And that there was a lot of it, debates were there from among the scientific people. And this has been sponsored by the Department of Ayush. And this program was organized at the Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. As said, this is under the aegis of one of the reputed organizations, the Society of Pharmacovigilance of India, that was working for the conventional medical science in collaboration with Center for Safety and Rational Use of Indian System of Medicine, uh, established by Sir uh, Hakim Zillu Rahman. And the recommendation of this symposium is, yes, in India, there must be an organization or something the government has to start an exclusively national pharmacovigilance program for Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani drugs. And this recommendation was submitted to the ministry. Since 2007, government of India came out of with the directives and uh, I Institute of uh, Postgraduate Teaching and Research Ayurveda Jamnagar was selected as a center for this Ayush Pharmacovigilance program. And the program was continued since 2007 to 11 and 12 because of certain inhibitions and set of the limitations of the final, financial and administrative reason. The project was again, uh, there was a big uh, gap has happened. And the, it was only in the recent 2017, Ministry of Ayush under the central sectorial scheme, this uh, pharmacovigilance program reviewed and they came out of with a new title called as Pharmacovigilance Program of ASU and H drug, where they included homeopathy drugs also. And now this is in execution. And what is the latest development is, if you look at the present status of pharmacovigilance of ASU drug in India, uh, we have, this is the structure which is mentioned in the pyramidical one. And at the top, we have, it's a three tier system. We have one National Pharmacovigilance Center of the All India Institute of Ayurveda, New Delhi. This is a national coordination center under which five different intermediate pharmacovigilance centers are here. I just don't want to waste my time. Just coming to the focus for Unani, National List of Unani Medicine, Bangalore is being designated as the intermediate pharmacovigilance center. I'm very lucky to place before you and the coordinator designated for this activity. And uh, under the, as I said, this is a three tier system at the base at the ground level. So far, around 100 peripheral pharmacovigilance centers of all systems. Ayurveda, Yoga, Yunani, Siddha, Soyripa, Homeopathy, working to collect the information of the objectives of the pharmacovigilance. Out of which, for Yunani, so far we have 15 for peripheral pharmacovigilance center. You can allocate yourself, which is near to you, the National Research Institute of Yunani Medicine or Hyderabad, CRM Lucknow, Chennai, RRM Mumbai, RRM Delhi, Srinagar, Kolkata, Ajmal Khan Tipia College, Aligarh, Hakim Zilu Rahman Medical College, Bhopal, Dr. Abdullah Minan Medical College, Karnul, Government Tibia College and Hospital Patna. These are the 11 existing functioning peripheral pharmacovigilance center, recent past only. Government has accorded four more centers. One is at the Government Nizam Tibi College in Hyderabad, Hospital Hyderabad, Telangana, University College of Unani Medicine, Tonk, Mamadiya Tibia College, Malego, Maharashtra, and Regional Research Institute of Unani Medicine, Badrak, Odisha. So likewise, for Unani, 15 peripheral centers in every state, except Telangana, two states are, two centers are there. Uh, we are trying to expand these peripheral centers to different part of the country so that every nook and corner of these peripheral centers should collect the data about the safety related aspects of the Unani drugs being used. And on the aims of the pharmacovigilance, why this pharmacovigilance program is launched and why it is important is because the aim of the project is to improve patient care and safety, improve patient care and safety, and to overall to improve public health and the safety, and to contribute to the assessment of benefit, harm, effectiveness of the risk of the medicine. And because we know that uh, the drugs are not always going to be effective, sometimes it could be harmful also, to contribute the assessment. And finally, to promote understanding education in clinical training in pharmacovigilance, and it's effective communication to health professionals. Like today, we are interacting about uh, the objectives and the importance of the pharmacovigilance. This is also one of the aim of the project of the of pharmacovigilance. And objectives have been categorized into short-term objective. What is the short-term objective? Uh, immediately, our intention is to develop the culture of notification. I mean, all the people who are attending this webinar, I request all of you, whenever you come across any adverse effect that is not intended with any drug, you please start notify it. Try to report it. This is a short term. Medium term objectives are there. 
to involve more healthcare professionals, not only the Unani doctors or doctors of any system of medicine, but the same time pharmacists, nursing staff, paramedical, any person starting from highest profile to the lowest profile involved in the medical system should be associated in this drug monitoring and information dissemination process. Finally, the long-term objective is to achieve operational efficiencies that would make our national pharmacovigilance program for the ASU drugs benchmark for global drug monitoring endeavor. I have this long-term objective is one of the point under the importance. Let me take to the final part of my discussion is the importance of the pharmacovigilance, which is rather my topic also. Here, uh, if you look at this Yunani, uh, the drugs, what we have used, what we are using is, they have been derived from the three different sources, like Mawali, the Salasa, three different sources, where we have predominant 90% of herbs are there, natural, generally we believe everything which is coming from the nature are safe. Minerals and animal source of the drugs we have. And uh, if you talk about this uh, herbs, natural means generally the perception is that they are safe. Safe stand for harmless, it doesn't carry any no risk. But now the concept of natural and safety is no more because we have n number of reports obtained from the natural sources where they have end up a different kind of adversaries. And what is this adverse event reported, anticipated to the drugs that can be attributed to this? Generally, why we are going to pay importance of the pharmacovigilance in the system of medicine? Because whether the drug, what we are using is a herbal origin, mineral origin, or animal, basically we are facing the biggest problem is whatever some of the drugs been reported adverse event are anticipating the drug reaction, and that can be contributed to the reactions are mostly associated with the poor quality of the drug. That drug is not of a quality. The reason is there is no proper quality control mechanism. Sometimes it is a mistaken use of the wrong species. For example, I was supposed to ask to use Asgan Naguri, but I've been taken some other Asgan Desi or Ajwain Khurasani, Ajwain Desi. There are two different conventions are there. Sometimes it's a misidentification of the drug. Uh, uh, some, what happened if you try to buy it from the Pansari or the drug vendor, uh, if you ask any medicine, sometimes he may give wrongly, and it could be intentional or unintentional, then it can lead to mistaken. And medication error, we have a number of problems. Let me share one of the examples at our, our institution, the places we have often happen. And we have both liquid preparations like sherbet and oils. If you are not going to give proper education to the patient, which one is to be used orally and which one is to be used locally, there is a chances of error is there. I mean, syrup can be, syrup might have been used locally and the aisle, aisle might have been used orally. So medication errors are there to prevent this one. And most of the drugs are adulteration. You won't get uh, what is called this zafran in a day, nowadays. And like uh, and uh, that a few, there are even, uh, what is called the alva has also been adulterated. Then adulterating with the, some other drugs. Incorrect dosing, I mean, if you prescribe the drug to use by the patient and sometimes the patient is not taking the drug according to the prescription. Improper use, you have told the patient to take the medicine after meal or before meal or with meal or with proper vectors are there, but the patients are not paying attention. Or this could be happen from the doctor or it can be happen from the patient also. And moreover, the worst condition is the contamination of the environment is also going to play very visible because the drugs, herbs are derived from the nature and from the soil. And we don't know the different areas of the soil will be cultivated with the different kind of environmental hazard substances. And if these contaminations will be carried and such a contamination also can cause us a lot of a problem to the uh, users of this drug. Drug interaction, uh, nowadays, people are very fond of using conventional drug along with the herbal drugs without taking proper advice of the, the person, respective person concern. So in our, uh, nowadays, Unani drugs are being used generally with the conventional drug or sometimes Unani and Ayurveda homeo. So uh, it is better to be avoided to take such a conjunction of the drugs or take a right opinion from the physician who can tell you about that, what are the drugs to be taken with the food and some of the substances. And as I said, some herbs are inherently toxic. Some of the drugs are very toxic like opium and uh, this Naxomica and the toxic. If you want, if you can't, if you can't use these drugs as it is, we have to go for modification or modulation or detoxification, mudabbar. And moreover, the drugs of third and fourth category qualitatively cannot be given directly. And all these things are related to our United system of medicine. So it makes mandatory for us uh, to learn 
to follow the guidelines of the pharmacovigilance. These are all the things which makes us to be important for pharmacovigilance. And above all, the statutory regulation, Government of India, based upon the directives of the international community, WHO, uh, govern the document causes safety of your drugs. The reason is, you produce the safety of your drugs uh, and the, it is likely to be globalized the system of medicine. So this is one of the objective of the government is to go for a proper documentation of the drugs and it will be better for projecting the system to the global community. Finally, the conclusion is because no effective medicine is without risk. If there is an action, definitely there will be reaction also. And understanding of the medicine safety can be achieved only after wide clinical use, like today what we are observing with the drugs. The practice of medicine in Yunnan is more personalized to the individual patient because we believe over the temperament, visage of the drug and the visage of the patient. And by and large, adverse effects are nearly rare with Yunani drugs as because the drugs are prepared strictly adhering to the procedure mentioned in the classical text. I mean, the practitioners of Yunani, they are very bound to follow the ethics of preparing the drug, disseminating the drugs, distributing the drugs, but at the same time educating the patient also. Beyond that also, something may wrong as because it is unlikely to predict harm. We cannot predict harm with any medicine. However, to prevent such a harm, if it is associated with any medicine, one need to observe keenly and document it. If you document it, because so it will be, uh, it can help you to limit the damage achievable in future. Document and notify it. It will be a reference for the future situation. So with the help of that knowledge, one can prevent the damage in the future. Finally, today, we would be able to identify an association between drugs and outcome and allow us to suspect drugs with the minimal signals. Signals means repeated adversaries reported from different drugs. And based upon the data, we are able to determine whether the adverse effect is truly because of the drug or anything else. Finally, the conclusion is government's statutory regulation made it mandatory uh, as a pharmacovigilance program of ASU drugs. So every system which is gone by the preparatories of ministry should be followed the directions and the guidelines of the pharmacovigilance and complaint should be submitted. Thank you for patiently listening. If you have any